Hey everyone, uh, hope everybody's doing well today. Happy July 4th for, for those of you who are in America with me. Um, so for today's video, uh, I'm gonna do another, um, I guess just discussion video, uh, video where I share with you guys some of my opinions and my thoughts on, on the market. Um, I've been seeing, uh, since I made that video um, five, six days ago or so on some of my concerns in the market, I've seen uh, a lot of videos pop up um, talking about the same subject. And I don't know if that's uh, in response to my video or in response to my video and some other videos. Um, but I've heard some concerning responses um, that I want to <laughs> respond back to. So my goal is not to is not to get into any sort of feuds with anyone or to to upset anyone. I, I I'm a, I'm the type of person who I really want everyone to get along <laughs> and um, everyone to kind of be comfortable and try to come to like some consensus and just kind of be honest and um, so that we all can just kind of feel better and and enjoy this hobby. But I do understand that the reality is that when you share opinions and, and when people disagree with your opinions, they don't always uh, appreciate you having a different opinion than them. And that can really rub them the wrong way and upset them and sometimes cause them to, um, you know, be, be rude or um, maybe overly dismissive of your arguments or not really, really take that into account, you know, versus people who might disagree with me, um, you know, but have really good reasons why they disagree with me and are interested in, in sharing those or, or having a discussion, you know, back and forth discussion about that. I really appreciate that. I, I really like that. Um, I don't expect that, that I, you know, I'm, I'm certainly right on, on everything that I, you know, am saying in these videos. Um, and I'm always looking to learn from people who are uh, more experienced than me or have different experience than me or, or different really uh, interesting, you know, points to make. This is definitely a, a, a group learning process. Um, so that being said, um, one thing I am hearing in, in some people's videos and, and even from people and, and collectors and businesses, you know, people who, who kind of own their own business um, uh, that I find particularly troubling is this idea that there is no market manipulation in Pokemon and market manipulation doesn't exist and market manipulation can't possibly be affecting the prices of these cards and these cards are all driven by organic demand and nobody is trying to push up the prices right now you know, in any sort of way. It's all just collector-driven, organic love of the cards. Um, and that is, first of all, uh, there is a t there's always lots of manipulation or, or attempts at manipulation in any market you're involved in. You know, when we talk about things like the stock market, there are agencies that, that try to regulate, you know, some of that, that market manipulation. And, and obviously there, you can break the law depending on how you're trying to manipulate the market. Um, you know, in, in our, in, in collectibles, there are uh, a fewer laws. Uh, there isn't, you know, an agency that, that is, that is specifically, you know, going after some of these behaviors. But of course there are things that are, that are against the law and I'm not a lawyer. And so, you know, certainly, you know, blatantly, uh, you know, any sort of stealing behavior or behavior where you, you, um, you don't, you know, either send someone money for a card or, or, you know, some sort of, you know, gross thing, thing, thing like that, um, you know, is against the law and police can get involved in things like that. But, um, but, um, you know, outside of that, it's sort of like the, the, a bit of the, the wild west in collectibles, which I think is part of why, it's so appealing. It's such an appealing place. You know, when I think about it, it's such an appealing place for people who um, kind of want to manipulate prices and might have fun manipulating prices. You know, and when I think we, when I, when we talk about market manipulation, we have to be really careful. Like, what do we mean by market manipulation? You know, what are the semantics of, of that? What are, what are we trying to say? Um, and, you know, one point I want to make is that 
I don't think all market manipulation is created equal in terms of uh, in terms of uh, ethics. Like there's some, you know, and these are going to be my opinions in the video, right? There's some market manipulation tactics that people take that that really, really rub me the wrong way and I find really incredibly unethical. And that is sort of what, in some of that stuff that I was seeing from, from certain people is what kind of inspired that that first video that I made. Um, you know, there's there's a stream or two that I've seen that, that they're based, they're flat out lying to people about the value of their cards and telling them things that are, are very clearly not true with a little bit of like searching. You know, so that's that's market manipulation. Market manipulation is is spreading false information, overinflated card information. All of that is an attempt to manipulate the prices so that people will buy from you. Okay, so when we're, when we're talking about market manipulation here, you know, what's the difference between for these sellers, like between being a good salesman and market manipulation? You know, where's that line? You know, and so for this video. I would, I would like, let's define market manipulation like pretty broadly. And it's sort of anything that you do to uh, manipulate or to move prices in your favor, okay? Anything that a person is gonna do to move prices in, in their favor. So if they, if they want prices to go down, you can also manipulate markets down so that you can buy, right? So... Um, if, if a person comes out and says that these cards are way overvalued, they could be, they could be trying, intentionally trying to manipulate the prices down so that they can buy the cards again because they, they're upset or feel bad that they weren't able to get those cards at the prices they wanted, right? So that can be manipulation too. Also, sellers can man certainly manipulate the other way and manipulate their card values up. So you have to be wary of both of those things, okay? Um, so using that definition... Um, uh, sort of the intentional uh, manipulation, you know, movement of prices and prices in one in one or other direction based on sort of your your goals in an effort to make more money or get the cards you want. Um, you know, the most common ones we're going to see in this hobby are things like um, different types of shill bidding is going to be a really common one. Um, and what shill bidding means is it can be a different thing. So it can, it can range from like the, what I think is sort of the grossest shill bidding, which is where you are, you're literally, um, uh, we don't even need to call it shill bidding, but just you, like you could buy an item, you could buy your friend's item or buy your own item, you know, uh, just so that eBay records a, a sold price um, that's really high, you know. And then you could relist that item later or just not even relist that item. Like, let's say I had like three gold star PSA 10 Charizards, for example. Let's just say, theoretically. And I, and I, I make it look like one actually sold for, for you know, $15,000, okay? And then I place another one a week later in an auction. And I use that $15 price point to drive the, my auction price on my other, you know, PSA 10 gold star Charizard with a different, you know, um, serial number on it. You know, and like to think that that stuff isn't that people aren't doing that, that somehow our hobby is just filled with like totally honest saints is um, is is quite, uh, quite naive, in my opinion. And I do think people do that stuff probably a fair amount in, in little and small way in, in little and big ways where there are thousands and thousands of dollars on the line, but also in smaller ways. I think another even more common, so that's one of the grossest type, that would probably be like the very gross type of, you know, show bidding. Another type of show bidding is bidding up items. So bidding up your own item or bidding a friend's item to get it to the price that you want to get it. So um, it can be like your own item, it could be a friend's item, but it also could be just an item that you own. So for example, using that gold star, you know, PSA 10 Charizard, let's just say. Um, if I see that that card is about to go for less than I want it to go, because let's say I have three of them, right? So the card that's being, that, that's being auctioned right now, I, I am not involved in that auction in any sort of nefarious way, but I don't want that auction to go below, below a floor in price because I don't want people to think, oh my gosh, that card is retracing. Oh no, you know, sell, sell, sell. I don't want that panic to get out there. I'm going to manipulate the price so that I'm gonna push the price up, so I'm gonna throw in some bids to try and move that price up. And then if I win the auction, let's say, I could retract my bid 
or you know if I do it well and I know when to bid and I and I do it in a way that that is maybe early enough that someone then comes in in you know on top of me what I've really done is just sort of effectively pushed up pushed up the price or maybe I'm okay with buying that card like if I like is I have the money and so if I do end up winning it over the you know let's say I'm trying to get it above 10,000 if I do end up winning it over 10,000 I've decided that for for my sort of because I own three more of those gold stars that that worst case scenario if I do happen to to get it and then I have to pay for it which is the most ethical thing to do right if you do that type of like ramping up prices and you win the auction by mistake you should pay for the item and not retract the bit you know it's very very unethical in my opinion and you've cost that per that that other person a lot of money so if you're gonna if you're gonna you know, engage in that sort of behavior, which again is, is very, um, it's, it's really not, it's, it's really unethical to do that, for, you know, from my personal opinion, um, at least buy, at least, you know, buy the item at the end, right? But, but not everyone does. And these things are happening a lot. It, you know, I, I guarantee it. Um, I guarantee it. Um, you know, how much it's happening, we don't really know. But when you see prices go up like 10 times, 15 times in the matter of months, that's like when my alert goes more on that like, are people psychologically real? Are there really that many people honestly bidding on these items to get them that high, to get them that quickly up, particularly items where there were lots and lots and lots of them? You know, there were lots of PSA 10 first edition, like, fossil Watsies going. There were lots of PSA 10 first editions of, of all those sets going. And these are not necessarily cards that had super, super low pops either, a lot of these. So th that's where, you know, you know, I don't think it's it's conspiracy theorist at all to say, to say th this. You know, I think that it's, like, it's pretty common sense to say, like, okay, like, seems unlikely that just a huge flood of of new genuinely interested people were all willing to bid each other up all of a sudden at one time that's where i start to wonder is this market being pushed to a new level by by certain wealthy individuals maybe you know so did a lot of people buy it at a certain price to push it up and then hype it you know okay so the next thing we're going to talk about and the next piece of it is you can combine these strategies so the next piece we're going to talk about we can talk about is like um I think it's called, I've heard it's, you know, in the stock, in the stock market and in, in the stock trade, it's called like pump and dump. If you guys have ever heard that, but the basic idea is you, you pump up the value of something, get other people hyped up and excited about it. And then you sell it at that high price, you dump it, and then it collapses back to that original price. And then maybe you buy it again at the bottom or whatever, and then rinse and repeat type of thing. And you can do that across, across, um, you know, any, all these collectible classes, like people, people do try this stuff. Now it doesn't mean it's effective. You know, I think these things, these things are often difficult and you can be left holding the bag. Like just because, you know, so for example, like if I have a really big YouTube channel, let's say I have millions of people watching my videos or something, you know, crazy, right? Like the power of your influence is huge. Any little thing that you do could manipulate the market. Anything that you say could manipulate the market. You could you could say that a price, you know, like there were there were videos that I saw that that lots and lots of people watched where they would talk about these new prices and they wouldn't say like, is that price real? They would just like it'd be the first time like the Blastoise PSA 10 first edition ever sold at 10,000. And they would say like, that's the price. That's what it's going for right now. Instead of saying like, oh my gosh, this jumped $5,000. And I wonder why it jumped $5,000 in the course of like a week. And maybe we should wait to see if like more of them get sold at that before we decide that that's that price. But instead, there were there were millions of people watching videos and, and 50,000, 100,000, a million people watching a lot of these, you know, these types of videos that said like, no, that's the new price because of one sale that could have been manipulated, that could have been a, a shill sale. And now some of the sales that some of these, these um, sales that are happening now, I'm concerned it's, it's not, it's very, it's people who are young and a bit naive and very speculative coming in, coming in and speculating on these cards. And they are like leveraging themselves on credit cards to buy this card for $10,000. That's my fear. I hope that's not happening. But they're doing it because of that first, you know, manipulated sale potentially, or a few manipulated sales. It's also possible none of the sales were manipulated. But when you see a 
double in price. You know, the Level X cards, for example, that I talked about in my last video, when I see Level Xs go up 10 times in the course of a few months, I am concerned about shill bidding and things pushing those cards up, okay? Doesn't mean that that's true, and it's possible that someone, you know, that the shill bidding happened, uh, you know, in other areas, and then someone said, okay, well, everything else r rise. I think the level Xs are gonna be the next thing to do, and I'm gonna speculate on those, and there aren't that many of them. You know, and I talked about how low the pops are on those, you know, um, and how I like the art on those cards and how I didn't understand, you know, why people weren't, um, uh, were so negative level X, for example, you know, talk about manipulation, maybe the other way, you know, people pushing the prices down on those potentially, you know, so all of this stuff, one thing that's really the, the key to all of this into trying to figure out is, is someone manipul is someone trying to manipulate me or not, is the quality of, you have to, you have to think about their arguments. First of all, is someone giving you arguments for why, for what they believe? Or are they just telling you that something should be valued something? Or something is very undervalued but don't tell you exactly why? Or aren't very honest about their incentives or their motives for what they're doing? Like the more honest a person is, like I'm trying to be, the more honest I am about like, these are the cards that I have so you guys know that I have huge positions in these, okay? This is my feeling on these cards. This is why I feel that way. Here's A, B, C, and D. And that doesn't mean that I'm right. It's just my opinion. You should do your own research. You should look up your own prices. When you hear people talk like that, and plenty of people talk like that in this hobby, there are plenty of very honest, like, great people. Um, those are the people that I would suggest you, you listen to. But we have to be really careful. I would just, I would, I would caution everyone you know, from the big people who are manipulating to the to the small YouTube channels who are manipulating, you know, and I think that that some of this, um, for, for it to really be like market manipulation, I think, you know, and uh, sort of an unethical market manipulation, I think it really does need to be intent intentional. I think that what happens is someone starts the manipulation and then a lot of other channels or a lot of people repeat the same thing that they heard someone else say. And so they're not necessarily really manip really intentionally manipulating or, or put, trying to push the prices one way or another. They're just saying what they heard the, the expert say or the, the person who should know the most say rather than kind of developing their own, their own logic or their own thought about it or explaining that that's just their opinion and this is the reason for their opinion. That sort of stuff, okay? Um, you know, so, so going back to that hype, you know, that hype piece, like, like it's so easy and we've seen it, like, it's just common sense guys. So we've seen it time and time again for anyone who's been paying attention. As soon as a big YouTuber talks about a set, as soon as lots of people, and then lots, lots of people on Instagram and lots of their followers start talking about the set or the cards and then the prices skyrocket. Like now, whether that YouTuber did it to manipulate the market or just, um, or just because they, they generally like, they genuinely liked it is very key whether we call it mark manipulation or not because a youtuber showing a really cool card and making a good argument for why this card is awesome and really rare and scarce and then a lot of people hearing that argument and thinking oh you're really right i'm gonna say that argument too to other people and then i'm gonna you know buy that card to me that's not market manipulation to me that is that is that is um sharing accurate information and i think we need we need we have to have a distinction there because we have to be able to share information with each other and get, share each other and share opinions with each other without feeling like uh, all of that is unethical and we can't we can't communicate for fear of our opinions are going to affect someone's point of view, right? But but I do think that there are people who might hear a YouTuber say something and then piggyback on that and and exaggerate it intentionally to manipulate it because they own those packs, they own those cards. And this can happen from modern to Watsy. Like this is happening a ton with Watsy stuff in my opinion. And there, there's a lot of concern I think, you know, that, that this stuff can be happening in Wizards of the Coast. You know, again, um, all of that is, is to, in my opinion, fairly common sense speculation based on the, based on the movement of all these things. What's inter what's going to be really interesting, and what I talked about in my, in one of my videos about price memory as one of the keys to this whole thing is now that these cards are actually being sold at these higher prices, like 
will that just become the established price? And so maybe they were manipulated up. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe a horde of new people came in and were willing to pay, you know, 10 times the amount they were a few months ago. Psychologically, it's a little hard for me to wrap my head around that. Um, how there are that many people willing to, willing to make that jump that quickly. That's just, that's just seems very strange to me. Um, you know, I mean, the only explanation for that, right, is that like literally we have tens of thousands of people who just rediscovered their cards at home during COVID, for example. And like, there is a scenario where like that is potentially true and that's why they just went up so quickly. But, you know, I think what, what, what seems so interesting about it is it, is it, um, and I could be wrong about this, and I think it's different for different cards, but there seem to be such huge, quick jumps. And, that, and, I, and that's what made me feel like it was fueled by manipulation. I, definitely, there's a ton of organic interest in this hobby. I have a ton of organic interest. Plenty of people have a ton of organic interest. There isn't a worry that these cards are going to like collapse all the way back down or, or further down than probably they were. You know, that is possible. Anything is possible in the future, but I'm not expecting that right away because I do think that the collector base, that the genuine interest is going to be at a certain point that, that it can get to a certain value and be like, okay, well now it's worth picking up for, for the, for the average collector. Um, so all important things to keep in mind there. You know, so in this age of, of social media, you know, as I'm getting it here, it's just so easy to have these like ripple, these ripple manipulations through the community. And I just remember people talking about Sky Ridge and then it hyping that one up and it going crazy. People talking about Legendary Collection, hyping that one up and then it going crazy. Like, um, you know, and sometimes, as I said before, there are good arguments and that's what, what, what wins people over. But a lot of the time I feel like it's people who own the product who want to push their product up. Um, and, and as I was saying before, that can happen, right. For like, you see all these channels, like push, pushing X, Y evolution right now, pushing hidden fates, pushing, you know, these are amazing. These are, you know, get them before they're gone. You know, just, I feel like I'm such a minority in me, in, in just, and I'm not saying don't do that. I'm not saying like those sets couldn't go up. I'm literally just saying like, be careful of market manipulation. Be careful of putting more, like over leveraging yourself. Like I'm giving you very like moderate common sense, I think approaches. And it concerns me that I'm getting pushback, like strong pushback from not a ton of people. It's been, it's been just a few people, you know, um, but that concerns me. And when I see like lots of these channels and when I look at the comments and everyone's saying, yeah, like Hidden Fates will go up forever and it's amazing and, and this or that, it's like, how much Hidden Fates product does that YouTuber have? Like how much X and Y does that YouTuber have? Like, are, is that why they're, like that would be my natural question. It'd be like, why should I listen to this random guy? He's not even giving me like, you know, really good reasons to buy this, you know, potentially. Now, some might be, so I don't, I'm not, if you made a Hidden Fates video or you made an XY Evolutions video and you gave like good reasons why you think it would go up and you t talked about your position and you were, you were very honest with all of that, you know, I don't, I don't feel like that's unethical at all. You know, then I feel like it's on, it's the responsibility of the, of your watchers, you know, to understand that information and, 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 um, you know, uh, you know, make decisions, you know, basically off of it. But I, but I do hold people personally accountable who are intentionally making videos right now to manipulate the market. They're not doing it because they think they're right. Even they're doing it solely to push prices, you know, or in large part to push prices. Um, and people are going to have a bad time. If, if a lot, if a lot of that's going on, people are going to have a bad time and the rug is going to be ripped out from people. Um, and that's just, it's just what ha has happened in so many hobbies and, and to so many people, you know, and the idea that like Pokemon is immune to like unethical behavior is strange to me. It's like, we're not worse than other hobbies, but we're also not so much better than other hobbies. The reality is we're, we're younger and we're a bit more naive than, than a lot of hobbies. It just, it, because, because we're younger, including me, like I'm right. Like I'll hopefully be less naive in 10 years and mistakes I'm making today. I'm making plenty of them. I'm, I'm sure all the time, uh, you know, just ask my girlfriend, <laughs> um, you know, as you get older, you hopefully, you know, are less naive, right? You, you, you make these mistakes, you learn about life, you learn about other people and, and what other people do. 
and you become hopefully a person like a better character, a better virtue, and you learn how to behave, you know? Um, okay. So, uh, what else do I want to say about this? Um, you know, during times like this, it's also so easy to manipulate prices because it's so chaotic and it's hard to track like what is going on, like what, like what price should be where, like there, there's so much movement. So just be really careful. Like when prices are all over the place for everything, you know, be very careful. I want to mention that, um, you know, and, and because we're, we're such a speculative, uh, hobby price wise, we're speculative because prices move around a lot and can suddenly, you know, I, I saw like a PWCC auction shining for sedition Charizard go for like, you know, in the eight to 9,000 range, I think around that. And then another one, basically the same day, go for like $7,000, like the same card, the PSA 10, Neo Destiny Shining First Edition Charizard. And that happens a lot. Just shows you like the, the craziness. It's like, was one shill bid? Was the PWCC one shill bid up to 8,900 and then someone made a mistake? Or is that gonna be retracted and then the next person under it's gonna have to buy? Like what's happening? Like why are people, or are people just like making, like are people just not doing their due diligence? And, but I just, if so, if I were to spend $9,000 on a card, I just imagine that I would do a ton of due diligence before spending that. And I would have looked to see if there were any other in the market and I would have watched the price on that, right? It's just, there's a lot of strange things happening right now. You know, I've been in the hobby for three years and I've been literally on eBay every single day looking at Pokemon prices. And I, I don't think there's any, there's no one who's looked, you know, uh, there are people might, who might be even, but I'm willing to say there's probably no one who had a better understanding and a better knowledge of the price points over the last three years. Uh, I literally could have quoted you like, like the prices of any card. You could have asked me any, any Watsy card and I would have been able to quote you like the last sold and the prices. Like I had that much of a deep, cause I'm, a crazy nut basically who also has a, a really strong memory for numbers and like and gets really into like finance and and details and data and like and it was it made a lot of sense there wasn't a lot of craziness now the numbers just seem all over the place and so irrational and so we're either two conclusions we have a lot of irrational buyers who need some help and need some knowledge and need to calm down with that fear of missing out and make some better decisions we have that or we have a lot of people who um um, or we have a lot of manipulation. We, you know, we have a lot of that. Um, and, uh, you know, clearly I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, no one does. Um, let's see, anything else I want to cover? You know, another thing, you know, there are lots of thing, other things that people do too, uh, um, that are, you know, not, I wouldn't consider unethical, but you should really think about these things. So people put, people put prices for like very, very high on eBay often. And I hear people saying, and I've said this in a previous video, but I'm gonna repeat it here, because this is, this is a type of market manipulation. They're putting those prices really high for two reasons. One, to get views to their page so that you'll check out their eBay listings. But two, the more and more you see that card going for a million dollars, two million dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, the more you start to think that card is actually worth that, even though it's never sold for that or anywhere near that, okay? Um, so you just have to be aware that like these people are businesses like they're they're not bad people like like them doing that and them having like business strategies you know to they want to sell you their cards at the highest possible amount that they can they're a business and they're trying to make money and they're trying to support themselves and, and their family and that's admirable that's no you know that's that's what what we're all doing right like like we we, we all are involved in in businesses in our own life and it's not fair you know i don't want to i'm not my intention is not to come around here and like bust up people's businesses, but I'm concerned with the with the kind of low level of consumer that I'm that I'm that I'm seeing in cer in certain cases, and I just want to help educate the community better so that we do a better job of like, you know, um, not making mistakes in 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 what we buy and why we buy and what we believe the prices are, and and I'm just I'm I'm a bit I'm I'm unhappy with this idea you know, that, um, that I hear, you know, really like really smart, wonderful experienced people in the hobby saying that like, this is definite, like couldn't be a lot of manipulation and couldn't be, um, you know, 
a combination of like YouTube, Instagram, social media hype, and tons of people doing gross stuff, little gross stuff that pushes, that manipulates people's minds and puts people in it, in you know, outside of what they normally would do, right? The issue with all of this, and I think I'll, I'll wrap it up here and end here. The issue with all of this at the end of the day is, is the bottom going to drop out? Is this a house of cards? Once these people stop pushing like that these are great and it's always going to go up forever and once the sentiment and feeling changes and if people have over leveraged themselves a lot on their cards and they're going to, they need to kind of flip those cards or sell those cards in order to, you know, pay off their debt, their credit cards or whatever, like what percentage of, of people are going through that right now. And I know that a lot of people like buyer like big time sellers i've talked to some big sellers and they've told me that they've never experienced this amount of people buying on credit and asking for like 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 a, a certain amount of time to pay for the cards and that also that's like flashing red light to me right that's that's like why are you spending outside of your means you're spending outside of your means for one of two things you either have a fear of missing out that you're never going to own this card you're never gonna be able to get that card that's dangerous don't don't try not to buy with that that's you're going to get yourself into trouble in life with that and or they they just are sure that it's going to go up in value and um both of those things worry worry me so so going back to this sort of wrap up wrap up point so what we have to worry about here is that this house of cards situation where like it falls once the hype and all this stuff dies down, if it dies down eventually, and people kind of like return to their senses and maybe people stop, like the people, if there is these like shill bidding and people are pushing these prices up or did that to a certain extent, or more and more people just run out of money, but there are more and more sellers who, who want to sell their cards at these new prices. And as PSA opens, this is going to be huge. Like there's going to be a lot more supply because PSA has more cards than they've ever had before right now. And this incentive to grade cards now, you're going to see tons of, of people who are sitting on mint copies of all sorts of things come out with cards right now. Um, uh, you know, particularly from places like Europe, I think, where, where it was like more expensive to grade. And so you needed that higher incentive, you know, point to point to grade. And I've heard personal stories of people that fall in that category. Um, so, so we have to be very concerned uh, that, that kind of all, if all those factors converge, we might, we're going to see that retrace, right? And I predicted a few months ago, you know, that prices might continue to go up. And, and I said that I, that I think they usually could, right? Which has been what's happening so far. Although now I think we're more in sort of a, tr a range. Some things are going up. Some things are starting to retrace. It's, it's chaotic. It's very messy, which is also scary. This is not, it's doesn't, it doesn't mean it's, a, it's not very a stable solid trading window and so what, what i would suggest people do is we need to like everyone take a chill pill here allow cards to kind of get back into a trading stable range where you're seeing a card sell for a price over and over again for a while that's when we know it's more likely that those are not being manipulated that those are genuine collectors sort of really buying you know every time one comes on the market there's a buyer who buys it there's a buyer who buys it particularly if the hype and the intensity of pokemon can go up forever dies down um people will start um buying those cards because they believe in them again because because they personally feel like that's a good that's a good price that's a fair price i want that card at that price for my collection for myself i'm not just buying it to flip later or or to make money later okay um, so at the end of the, of the day, because of price memory, like we may not see huge retraces and because people who are buying these cards, who are actually buying these cards and are and the ones that aren't shill bid or whatever, the, you know, the real purchases, um, and I've seen this pattern quite a bit. So I'm just going to say it one more time. I'll, I'll cease, I'll see a buy it now on a really high-end item like a gold star Aquaza or a, or a some sort of gold star some sort of thing and then like and then i'll see an auction go for a new high price not as high as that buy it now card you know or like the buy it now is close to that to reaffirm the auction price there's a lot of like strange so i mean that could be a few different reasons and and and, and they could be legit and i don't mean to just call it that gold star and someone out there might have that gold star and they can comment and say no i really bought that i i really believe it's that price and and that's fantastic you know um but i'm seeing these like connections and and it, it worries me where it's like i can see how someone could easily manipulate 
those PWC auction prices by by doing like a fake buy it now on this. And eBay does try to track these things down and 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 but people can create like new fake accounts. Like it's it's not it's not a um, to my knowledge it's not that difficult to um, to do some like fairly nefarious uh, behavior and it's not that easy to catch these people. Um, so so. The one thing that will will keep that will keep the prices from going down too much are these price ceilings and price memory. And if people are buying these cards not not because they um, they genuinely because they genuinely want to collect them and they believe they believe in those prices, and uh, if more people continue to come in the market, and if um, um, if they are genuinely um, if they are genuinely like. Um, um, if, if people are buying these cards, you know, because, you know, uh, basically because I'll put it this way. If, if people are buying these cards, you know, who, who aren't putting themselves in, in, in difficult financial situations and won't have to flip them again, and they can afford to basically hold them at those prices until they cross that price again, because no one wants to sell cards for lower than they bought them for. You know, if all, all of that is true and all of that is part of why price manipulation works so well and stabilizes a market. The problem is the more crazy a market is, the more consumer confidence goes down. And when consumer confidence goes down, then you, all, you can, can also see a destabilization of a market. And we don't want that to happen in the Pokemon market. So I wanna repeat, I am not making this video to destabilize the market. I don't want people to, to be in a panic. If you bought a card at one of the new prices because you were speculating and you were gonna flip it in the future and you were hoping it's gonna go up and you hear this and you worry more, don't worry, it's okay. You know, as long as you didn't, I really hope you didn't over leverage yourself on it, but I think Pokemon could easily, particularly if you're buying a, a rare scarce item, the prices that we're seeing now could easily be eclipsed in the future and prices may still go up a little bit more before the retraces happen. You know, nobody really knows. Um, but, w but again, what I worry about is when people say manipulation can't possibly happen, there is none of that. These are for sure all collectors. These are all for sure all real prices. Um, and then lots and lots of channels parroting that and telling everyone that and, and so few channels like this saying what I'm saying. Very concerning. If any, I'm, I'm not sure I've seen any videos quite like this in, in the Pokemon world specifically. Um, all right. So thank you so much for, you know, watching this far. I hope this is useful and interesting. Um, I would love to hear your guys' feedback, you know, and comments on this. Um, you know, my goal in this channel and uh, is t I want to be able to talk about my cards and talk about, um, you know, one good thing is I'm not a seller. And so I don't have that incentive like some other people might to push the cards on their prices. That being said, I still want my cards to go up in value and I don't want them to collapse and I want to have a very valuable collection. So I have that um, issue myself of like, I don't want to be overly negative because I don't want, I don't want these, these cards to plummet selfishly because, because I have a valuable collection. You know, so it's, it, these are complicated things to, to try and figure out, but I'm gonna keep trying to just be transparent and honest, um, and at the end of the day, like I, if all these cards go to zero, I will still be really happy that I own them very genuinely. Um, and this will, you know, be a very like interesting experience, right? In, in crazy prices. And so, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not in a situation where my business relies on, on the value of these and the continued value of these, like some other people. Okay. Um, um, you know, and I guess the last thing to say before we wrap up, um, and I know I'm rambling here and people have said they, they, they don't mind my rambles. So hopefully that continues to be the truth. Um, you know, people who have businesses are in a tough spot with this stuff. And I do think that ethically they have the right to, um, to be salesmen for their cards and to give and to push their cards and to make their cards look good. You know, whether that's right, like where is the line between being a good salesman and doing market manipulation? And I think that's for people to, to decide and continue to debate. Um, but everyone should be careful when you are taking advice from someone trying to sell you something in anything in life, including Pokemon. Okay. Um, and that doesn't mean, that means they could be the most ethical seller in the world. And oftentimes very good sellers or very successful sellers are, are successful because they're so ethical and honest with their, with their clients and their clients keep coming back to them and everyone wins. When I talked about that in a negotiation video, the ideal scenario is a win-win. 
right? Where you're being honest with your consumer. You're, you're not trying to manipulate or push them. You believe in what you're selling and the consumer can feel that. And so they, they pay you the price that you want. Um, uh, you know, and with those sellers, you know, another thing to say is that um, these sellers are, are friends often. And these sellers, these big sellers and these big YouTube channels, they know each other. And so you also have to be careful with um, with what I would call like like collusion is 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 too is too negative a word because I don't think what this is is unethical. But like they're going to be talking t about the market with each other, and they're going to be talking about strategies for how to sell you guys cards and for how to keep the prices up and and keep the prices solid. Um, some of them, maybe not all of them. Um, but, and I, and, I, and I think that's smart because this is a business for them. Like this is their livelihood and they should be thinking like that, right? They should be thinking about like, how do we sustain the hobby for ourselves? How do we, we, we don't wanna, they, they would also be concerned, right? About the overinflation to be fair, the good, the smart ones. Cause they're not looking to maybe, you know, make a big score. They're looking for the long-term growth of the hobby. And so really those, those types of sellers are really on our, should be on our side and, and on the collector side. They want us to continue to enjoy it and be engaged because that helps them be able to resell and make money. Um, um, and they, they, they're not just coming in, manipulating and then leaving and pulling all their, pulling all their, you know, um, like other people might be doing right now. Um, but, but keeping in mind that they talk to each other and so they can work together to potentially manipulate prices. And that can look like a lot of things. For example, you know, everyone with like a certain box could pull their box, could decide we're all going to pull our box from the market right now to create a, a feeling of artificial scarcity for the moment. And that feeling of artificial scarcity is going to create that fear of missing out in people. And then we're going to wait till that fear of missing out is intense. Maybe we're going to even make a YouTube video about it. And that's where you get into like really gross stuff if they're doing that. But we're going to wait. If they don't make that video, I don't think it's that gross. Honestly, I think it's pretty normal. They're going to wait till that demand builds up and then they're going to put it back one back on the market, you know, one at a time to make it seem and feel like it's a lot scarcer and rarer than it actually might be. Cause maybe they have 10 of those boxes each. You know, and they want to sell all of them. Their plan is to sell every single one. This is just theoretical. You know, this person, right? They want to sell every single one, but they want to create this feeling of scarcity around the box. If they throw all 10 on the market, it's going to be like, oh, I don't need to pay your price. There's no fear of missing out. There are a ton of them, you see. Um, so uh, all important things, I think, to to keep in mind and, and think about. And just 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 think logically. Be your own person, okay, in this hobby you know, listen to my opinions, listen to other people's opinions, always listen to different opinions to mine, people making good arguments on the other side. Um, uh, that, that is the key, okay, to, to being a, a smart and savvy, you know, collector in this hobby. All right, so thanks for watching, thanks for hanging in all this time, and um, I will talk to you all again soon. Take care.